Hi guys, this is Darren Ellis here, aka Wild Camper 1967. And some of you may have noticed I haven't made any videos recently. That is because I haven't been feeling too good the past two weeks. I have been told I have a viral chest infection by my doctor. I went to saw my doctor and he took one look at me and just, that's what he diagnosed. No tests, nothing. Um, so I don't know how we come to that conclusion, but nowadays with doctors, everything's a virus. It's an easy answer. But I have the symptoms of where, um, COVID, similar to when I had COVID previously, about two years ago. I've done two COVID tests, but no, it's all negative. So now I have been off work for almost two weeks because of a real severe cough that basically once I start coughing can last for about 30 seconds which leaves me very lightheaded because I can't breathe hence the reason why I haven't been out camping so I thought I will just do a video of some of the bits and pieces that I've purchased over the past few months to add to my kit which mainly is for bushcraft style wild camping but before I show you what I've purchased I would like to say a massive thank you to all you guys who've recently subscribed in the past few weeks. My account has gone from having just 25 subscribers now to 51. And I know that might not sound like a huge number to many people, but to me that is a massive sort of like uplift. It shows that people are interested in what I'm doing. So a huge thank you to you guys. It is really appreciated that you are clicking that subscribe button. And I would like to thank a few people who have also made the comments and even given me a bit of advice. In one of my videos, you see that I've picked up a little deer, a little form. And without thinking about it, I did put myself at risk by picking up that little animal. It was so cute and you just couldn't help yourself. But I didn't think. And it was one guy that pointed out, thank you, if you're watching, about that, the fact that the mother could have come back and attacked me. That didn't cross my mind. So yeah, he did have a very good valid point that I did put myself at risk by doing that. So that was a good lesson learned. And I wouldn't have given it a thought, but this guy clicked on my video, made the comment and just passed on the advice basically. So yeah, it is very appreciated. I would also like to say a massive thank you. And I mean a serious massive thank you if he's watching. And that is an idiot outdoors. He's basically a guy, I think he's up north somewhere, that goes out and does staff camping. And he camps in such places you wouldn't even dream of camping. Basically, why I want to say a massive thank you to him is because I made a comment on one of his videos because somebody was putting him down. Because, or he was worried that somebody was going to put him down because he helped out a couple of homeless people by going to buy him some food. And he was very negative towards himself because he's basically he sounded like he was concerned what people might think he was some sort of mug for doing it. And he wasn't. He's, I didn't see him as a mug for going and helping out someone's homeless. So genuinely homeless, that was a brilliant thing to do because it meant he cared about the people in his area. So no, if you're watching this guy, you're not a mug. But what he did, because of the comment I made, he shared one of my videos on his channel so if you're watching this bud thank you so much for what you did it was so appreciated and it meant a lot that you went out of your way to share one of my videos and as you can hear i am completely and utterly bunged up as well with stinking cold on top of everything else but i'm going to give you just a slight update on my next camp if any of you watched my last video the one with the little fawn in it the deal I did say that if any of you guys clicked on the subscribe button, and I was only kidding, and boosted my ratings a little bit, I would do more stealth camps and I would do one in a bit of a spooky wood. And you guys decided to go out and click the bloody button, didn't you? <laughs> and I thank you anyway, I'm only joking. Yeah. So, as promised, well, I want to promise, basically. To my word, I said I would do a spooky stealth camp. So that's what I'm going to do when I can manage to get back out. And I'm seriously hoping I can do it soon because I'm missing doing my little camps. But the one I decided I'm going to go to now is uh, one I'm not really looking forward to. 
because it does have bad feelings there. And why I say this is because the birds don't sing in this certain part of the woods. You can't hear any birds. You hear them on the outside, but if you go into the old, where the old untouched bit of the wood is the best way I can put it, because it hasn't been just manipulated by man. It's been just left to grow naturally. Well, the birds don't go in there for some reason. And the saying is, if the birds don't sing in the woods, in that area, like on the area around such a place like that, it means it's seen death and there's bad memories there or there's still feelings there of unrest. So that is one place I decided I'm going to go because of that. I did the same thing as Sally in the Woods and I didn't hear any birds there. Didn't see any spooky activity, but I will be checking out another part of that wood as well and doing another spooky camp there at some point. The other thing about this wood that I'm going to go to is I've picked beech nuts and hazelnuts at the season when they are ready to be picked. And in this part of the wood, none of the fruit has been good. It's always been bad. And you can understand that in a hugely overgrown area. But this wood isn't massively overgrown. Um, so it's plenty of light to get to the trees. And you can't say it's just one bad batch of an area that's probably infected with a disease. Because that would say the whole wood is infected in this area. But for some reason, the fruit doesn't grow in there to be eaten so that's another reason why i think it's a bit spooky it's also going to be a hard camp to do because it's very well used by dog walkers and hikers so it's a case of when i do get to this wood it is going to be as stealthy as anything sneak in and set up as quick as possible and be very quiet so keep an eye on my channel because that will be the next video that's going to be coming out right just some of the bits and pieces then is which is why I'm doing this video that I've purchased I've not used yet so I'm just going to show you what I've picked up it's basically being used for woodland camping bushcraft camping sort of thing and the first thing I bought well it's not the first thing obviously managed to get these at a bargain price which is ex-army trousers waterproof trousers they have a full waterproof zip in them and I paid I think it was £10 for them, maybe less than £10 on eBay. Um, being ex-army, I'm not sure if they're British Army or American Army because of the colour. There is a slight difference to the English ones. I think they're the American ones, but they are ripstop material. They are like a Gore-Tex lining in them. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. As you can see, there is a sort of like interwoven mesh into it, which makes them apparently very breathable. So I'm gonna give them a go when it's a wet sim time. The other thing I put to go with it, hold on, let me get it out of the bag and everything's falling on me here. And this is the American one version, not the British version. Which is a poncho that unpops, turns into like a little basher, tarp, whatever you want to call it. Plenty of lines attached to it and everything else. You might have seen the photograph of me in my short wearing my respirator mask. That's a different story, that's to do with prepping, just the earth. me being a bit paranoid and having a laugh at the same time. So, yeah, I bought that as well. Basically, it's all bought for camouflage when I'm out doing my wild camping. I've also got a, a military jacket as well I purchased so I can stuff the pockets through bits and pieces and everything else but you'll see all that when I go camping next. Also this was a bargain is to also it is a Miltech Bivy. It is the copy version of the American bag I think it's the American one which is huge it is brand new but I purchased it second hand Facebook um, off a guy in Trowbridge 
and I paid £25 for it. He purchased it and decided not to use it. It's brand new, as you can see. Well, I can see. Um, so, yeah, I want to give a bit of a bivy camp somewhere, not take a tent. But at the moment, I feel too crap, and that's the only way of describing it, to do anything like that. So I managed to get that from Facebook, 25 quid. So that's another bargain I've purchased. The other thing I have purchased to add to my kit, and this, this is like bushcraft winter style camping stuff. I'm just getting bits and pieces along. You know, as you do, you just see something, you think, oh, quite fancy buying that. And this is the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. Now, I don't know if these are any good. They've been rated quite an excellent product to have in your kit. Let's see if I can get the bloody thing out first. It's stuck in here. I've packed it in so tight. It's quite large. It's meant to be waterproof. Huge blanket. That will be added to my kit for winter time. Or if I just go out and just take my lightweight sleeping bag doing a bivy camp. So yeah, 39 quid I paid for that, I think, off eBay. That was a cheap one. Some of them were selling them for 45 for the same size. I don't know how people work at their prices on eBay. There's a few more bits and pieces here. I also have this, which I've had for some time now. I've never got around to using it. <coughs> I spoke about it anyway. Some of you guys will remember if you see my videos, which is one of these little fireboxes. I decided to buy one of these as well to go with all my gear. Hold on, hold on. There is all this and everything else. Basically, it unfolds, as you can see, it's still got the blue taping on it on bits and pieces because I haven't got it all off. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you've got the base plate that slides in. Just goes in there and then you've got the grill that sits on the top for when you want to do your bits and pieces like your bits of cooking and everything else but yeah it goes that way so yep that's another little bit of kit i have purchased to go out to do my woodland camping it's more of a winter thing rather than a summer thing because we've got the warmer months now so yeah so whether this is any good how long the metal lasts on it it feels quite a thick stainless steel it's not thin and flimsy it's not cheap and nasty did pay a great deal for it i can't remember what i paid it was i think it was under 40 pounds i paid for it yeah and i know there's loads and loads of them out there on ebay saying about t like 20 quid and that lot what they're like i don't know but as you can see I don't know if you can see from that the thickness of the stainless steel, but it is quite thick. So this thing should last. It shouldn't actually rot away. You know what some things are like when you buy something cheap, nasty. Some of those barbecue things you can buy. They say that, you know, like the cheap thing you buy from B&M and all that lot. You put it in the garden after a couple of fire and fires, you, the metal starts flimsy, getting a bit, you know. Um, I had one, I had a little round fire pit, and I think after about six months, the wire mesh had melted in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, that should last me quite a while. I've also decided to go out and get one of these. I don't ask me why, I just saw it, it was reasonably cheap, I think about £20. It's adjustable, so you can lower it and everything else. Um, you put it over your fire. If you've got like a little campfire outside, you can just stick it over your fire and there's your little grill top to have your little barbecue on there or whatever you're going to do with it. Put your pots on it, you name it. Yeah, I don't really need that because I've got the fire pit, the firebox, but it's one of these things. You see it and you think, yeah, oh, I want that. that that come in handy. And you probably never use it. If you're anything like me, you'll end up with loads and loads of stuff that you never ever use what else have i got here um whether these are any good i don't know it is quite sharp well it's very sharp actually 
it's got some weight to it <laughs> and it's basically a survival axe now if any of you guys have seen these before and used them let me know what they're like because i you know you buy some things like this and i think i paid 15 pounds for it 19 pounds something like that um they say they're brilliant for bushcraft and everything else and next thing you whack it one with something like a piece of wood and the metal breaks so if any of you guys have bought something similar to this and you've had a bad experience with it let me know okay i just would like to know whether this is worth the money it's only like i said 15 quid i paid for it and i also bought one of these um yeah it's, it's one of those things again where you buy something because well why not yeah if you only think like me you end up spending so much money on bits and pieces that you don't need to buy but hey ho i've got nothing else to waste my money on kids are all grown up left home so it's a case of if i see it and i want it or need it or think i need it i might buy it i don't go over the top and like i said i do my best for this channel for you guys to stick within that budget range anyway because basically i want to help you guys if you're watching this and you're just starting out or you want to buy a kit you see all this stuff that people saying you know advertising and on youtube it's so brilliant but it's cost an arm and a leg well i basically do my channel so it's showing you the equivalent of this really high-end stuff that you can get for a fraction of the cost and it's basically at the same standard as the high-end stuff right roughly most of it is seriously it's like food i work in a food industry now i do and the products we sell well we don't sell we make them and produce it it's sold in various different shops i'm not going to say the brand names or anything like that but one of the products is a cheap cheap branded shop it's a well-known shop but it's the, you know it's like the family shop but also they supply to the high-end posh shops and the product is identical apart from the packaging and the price yeah it's the same with most stuff in life yeah but yeah here we go that is what a little tripod a pot stand whatever you're going to use it for i decided that this is what i was going to buy because it was there and i i don't i paid less than 20 20 pounds for this and there is a higher end version you probably could buy from whoever it's probably selling the same product for about 60 quid but yeah this is less than 12 i think it's less than 20 pounds i paid for it <coughs> excuse me and i should cut that bit out when i'm coughing but no you see i'm being realistic yeah um the other thing i have now is one of these for my bushcraft as in for cutting wood yeah i saw this and i thought hey ho that will do me and it's basically a saw now let me work out how i got to put it together okay because i haven't done this in a while so it's uh you slide that into there like that unlock and there you have your little bow saw and these are very very sharp um didn't pay a great deal for that i think that was under 15 pounds for this comes with a i say leverette it's not lever but it's a leverette that's the best way of describing it yeah and yeah it was i it's ideal for bushcraft it's ideal you're going out doing a little wild camping and you want a piece, some kit and you don't want to spend out the high-end money well there you go you can buy things like this all the stuff i've shown you you know ebay facebook you know 
you don't have to spend out high end prices to get a reasonably good quality stuff. And it's like I said, with this and that tripod, there are probably brand names out there, same as this, are selling it for about three times as much. But because it hasn't got the brand name on it, you get it at a fraction of the cost. So yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money out to get good stuff, all right? Well, there you go. That's all the bits and pieces I have added to my kit and I will get around to using some of it or all of it at some point in time. So I hope some of that information on the prices and what I've got has been helpful to you guys. Any comments on any of the things I've just shown you, if you've got them, use them. If you've had good experience or bad experience, feel free to let me know. I'd be quite interested to find out what you think of the products I've just bought or the items. And, and hopefully I should be out soon within the next week or so. And if, you, if you've been watching my channel and you're following it and you saw one of my shorts that I put um, posted recently, the short videos as in shorts, not shorts I'm wearing, okay? Where I'm wearing my poncho with my respirator mask on. And you want to know more about it? Yeah, drop me a line. I'm quite happy to tell you. Basically, I built a bug out kit. And no, well, no, yes, yes, no. Depends how you look at it. I am doing some prepping. And, and I don't mean just like major, major, major disaster in general. After the government posted the three day um, store up stockage sort of thing, um, it makes you think a little bit. As I said in one of my videos about the three days, there was also a fact that my sister was really concerned about the way things are going with Russia and Ukraine which I do think is a lot of propaganda coming out of America. Sorry, Americans, if you're watching this, anyone from America and Ukraine, there's a lot of propaganda coming out there in regards to Russia. I don't think Russia is stupid enough to use nuclear weapons against, well, anyone. You know, at the end of the day, if Putin, or Putin, goes and fires a warhead off at Ukraine, he knows he's going to get the best part of NATO firing them back at Russia. So it's a no-win scenario. So no, I don't think Putin has any intentions of using nukes on anyone. Yeah, he may have put some in place, but that's him saying, look, I've still got them. Americans do it all the time, and we do it. You know, as soon as uh, we want to show how powerful we are, we just remind people we have nuclear weapons. But the vast majority of the nations on this planet have the intelligence to know if you use one of those, even a small one, you're not going to win. Nobody's going to win. And regardless of it, you need to check out Nuke Map. Seriously, it, it, it's, it's, there is a serious nature to Nuke Map. Go online and look up Nuke Map. You can pick out whatever country you want and set off nuclear bombs and see the results. So, yeah, you can annihilate countries just by clicking on it. It's just, it's, yeah. Just check out Nuke Map. It's, it's, it's quite fun, actually. So, yeah, I have started putting together a bug out bag, what they call a bug out bag, a prepper's bag. And it, it does make sense to build one, put one together. And it does, if you look at the, what the government is saying about the three days site storing up, hoarding food, whatever you want to call it, I know it might be a case of like, oh, panic, panic. What are they not telling us? Is there going to be a war? But think about it logically. Just seriously think about it. I can't speak for Scotland or Wales, but what I saw here in my area in England, after a few days of the panic of COVID, what happened? The fact that you couldn't buy anything in shops. You, you go into a shop and people literally bought up everything. You know, people panic buy. So it does pay to do a seriously stock up of food bit by bit. You know, I don't mean go on massive panic, but I do it bit by bit. That's what I'm doing. I've got enough food in my cupboards, tin food, to last several months. 
and I am buying bottled water. And you might think, why? What well, well, bottled water got to it? You got a tap. But you've only got to look at recently with, it was on the news about, I think it was the Thames, where the water was unsafe to drink because it was contaminated because it hadn't been cleaned properly. Things like that happen. And this is one of the things we need to start prepping for. Not nuclear war or invasions or anything like that, but we need to start prepping for our own disasters that we create. Sewerage, our sewer plants, something goes wrong there. That's our water supply gone. And if you don't have bottled water stored up, I know the government in your area will eventually bring out bottles of water to you. But for a period of time, you have to wait. So if you've got bottles of water kept stored somewhere in a nice dark place, it will last for, well, and last forever, really, technically, unless there's something wrong with the bottle. So you've always got water there, so you can go to it if something happens. And it's the same with food. There is going to be another COVID at some point. If it's happened once, something else will come from China or Africa and make its way here, and we will be in that position again. Do you want to go through the stage of going to a shop, queuing in lines for nearly an hour just to get in there to find there's nothing in the bloody shops? And people do panic buy. The best example I can give you is when COVID hit, um, my partner and I was doing our shopping. There was nothing on the shelves, basically. We were just doing bits and pieces. And there was a Chinese woman, and she had literally purchased, well, chucked every single wet wipe she possibly could get in her trolley. And I mean, she cleared the shelves of wet wipes that was left on there. And my partner, being who she is, spoke up and said, why do you need to buy so many wet wipes? What about other people? And the result, the result she got was, I have two children. And my partner quickly answered back, yes, there are other people here also have children. What about them? And people do that. They don't care about anyone else. She'd purchase every single wet wipe. She won't use them. You know, she's probably still got them now. There was a guy, it was on Facebook, where he'd purchased some like 3,000 toilet rolls. Well, there was no cases of people dying from severe diarrhea in, from COVID. But he purchased nearly, I think it was nearly 3,000 toilet rolls. And then he started asking people, did they want to buy advertising? It was on, I think it was in the papers or on the news, some, something like that, about him trying to sell them off because he'd purchased so many loo rolls, <laughs> he was stuck with them. And people go through that mental state in their mind. It's like, I'm going to buy everything there is in the shop because I will need it. And then a few months later, whatever it is, whatever virus, it passes over and you're, you're looking at yourself and thinking, I've just blown the wages on wet wipes. I've just blown my wages on toilet roll. <laughs> so if you buy bits and pieces, slowly, when you go out shopping, stock up on your gear. That's all you've got to do. And it's nothing to be, nothing about being paranoid about what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. It's just common sense, okay? So the government do have some valid point about the three days, but I think they need to be thinking about more of a longer period of time than three days, you know? So, yeah, that's why I'm doing my prep work. But the respirator thing and that lot, I've got the box down there and the other bits and pieces. Um, yeah, it's a different story. You know, that's, that is a bit of a paranoia. Um, with all the things that's going on and then you keep hearing on YouTube about Putin's threatening nukes here and NATO's threatening nukes there and all that lot and you think maybe there is something in it but there is also maybe a lot of propaganda as well so if you watch any of that stuff yes be prepared but just don't take it too serious you know you're not going to get blown up by some country from Russia or anywhere else like that with nukes because like I said their presidents their prime ministers their leaders they're more intelligent than you know that to go and blow up a country with a nuke bomb because they know there's going to be nothing left of their country afterwards because the retaliation so there's nothing to panic well not as far as I'm aware we will see won't we but that's enough rambling on about 
that it, you know it's just yeah me rambling yeah so yeah keep it on my channel um i should be out soon making my next camp like i said i'm going to do that spooky camp in that wood a little bit of stealthy spooky camp um so i've got that in the planning i've got one other place that i'm thinking of for a stealthy camp and i think it was i got the idea from like I said, and I watched and I'm subscribed to an idiot outdoors from his channel where he camped in a graveyard, a cemetery, whatever you wish to call it, depends if you're American or English. Uh, so there's this really ancient cemetery graveyard that's a few miles from me. It's just, there's, there's no church there. It's just this little plot of ground surrounded by trees and bushes in a very, very dark area. So yeah, I might do a little bit of a stealthy one in there. Stealthy, spooky camping now at some point. Yeah, click that sub subscribe button if you want me to do stealthy camps. Well, I said it last time and it worked, so come on guys, hit that button. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, why not, you know? It's, you know, just hit that button, all right? Just, just go and do it, all right? And I'll do more stealthy camps. I'm gonna do it anyway, so it don't make a difference whether you click the subscribe button or not. But yeah. So yeah, that's it basically for this video. I just thought I'll make a video, keep you guys updated on why I haven't made any videos recently and what the plans are for the future for my channel. Once again, I would like to thank every single one of you who've hit that subscribe button and thank you to all those who've made any comments. Everything you um, like do, such as hitting that button, clicking that, you know, subscribe button, clicking that like button, making a little comment. It does boost my sort of like encouragement, so to speak, because I know you guys want to see more. And that means a hell of a lot, you know. Uh, it's like I said, it's only 51 subscribers, people might say. That's 51 subscribers. Double my sort of like subscription, yep. Why not subscription? My subscribers, and that is a massive win for me because it means I'm doing something right, and that's what counts. So I'm doing something right for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Any comments you want to make on the kit? Like I said, feel free. If you have any information or bad experience with this, some of the stuff I've shown you, let me know because I would love to know what you guys think about what I bought and whether it's any good or not. And if it's no good, and I will learn it's no good at some point, but I would like to know from you guys what experience you've had. Well, that's it, I guess. I will see you on my next video. Well, I won't see you, you'll see me, but I will be out as soon as I can. And hopefully this bloody virus will be gone by the end of the week because, yeah, it's getting getting on my nerves now. It's getting me down a little bit, the fact that I'm feeling really drained and tired and coughing all the bloody time. <clears throat> but, yeah, hey-ho, we live, we keep moving, we keep motivating, we keep going. We're British, you know. We're stiff upper lip and all that stuff. <laughs> So that means, yeah, whatever. And most Americans have probably watched this, probably haven't got a clue what I'm on about. But hey-ho, that's it. I'm going, all right, sorry. I'm, I'm waffling now. Thank you once again.